Good afternoon, everyone. Before I begin, I would just like to invite everyone to please, as we celebrate the Eucharist today, to keep in prayer, in a particular way, the deacons that minister here in our parish, as well as all of the deacons of the Diocese of Buffalo. The deacons have gathered at Christ the King Seminary beginning this Friday afternoon and will conclude later today for a time of prayer and spirituality, for conferences, learning and discussion with our bishop. A great opportunity for them to develop their prayer, to develop their ministry, and to truly grow as true servants of the gospel. And so today, as you can see, we have no deacons at all of the masses because of that. And so I invite you to keep them in special prayer today. The gospel today, we hear repeated many times a word that we don't often hear, and that's the word servant. Because the idea of a servant is usually limited to those people who are willing to be people of charity, who volunteer, who give of their time. They give of themselves. But there's also another way to look at servants, an element that is different and unique in some parts of the world because servants are considered as a luxury to some people, to the rich in particular, the wealthy, for they are their assistants, they help. But in the gospel today, Jesus reminds us that we all are called to live as servants of the Master, our God and Savior. And so, we need to look at that today. That role of the servant. Are we willing to be true servants of the gospel? Are we willing to do that each and every day of our lives? And besides that idea, what comes out to play is that you and I need to care about one another, to be servants to each other. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, since the beginning of his pontificate, has taken on and stressed the importance of humility, of servanthood, of care for our brothers and sisters. And throughout his time as the Holy Father, he has stressed a desire for a poor church and the importance of service, of being of service as servants to one another, of care for the poor, of living the gospel, of sacrifice for one another, of a giving as Christ has given for all of us. And we have seen in the works and the words of Pope Francis that exactly. And so Jesus came to serve. And he didn't do it for just a particular group of people. He did it for all of us. And so we can ask ourselves today, how can we best follow Christ's example and the way we live our lives every day. A few years ago, Fortune magazine broke a story about a gathering of some of the most wealthiest men and women in the world. It was organized by Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. And the magazine referred to it as the biggest fundraiser in the history of the world. It resulted in something very unique, and it was called the Giving Pledge. Forty of the most wealthy people, billionaires, not millionaires, had written letters that were posted on the internet that expressed their desire and their willingness to care for the poor and needy, of their willingness to pledge half of their great fortunes to the needy of the world, to charity a giving of what they had, a desire to care for the poor and the needy. And so people like Baron Hilton, Tom Monahan, Michael Bloomberg, Ted Turner, Oprah Winner, George Lucas, David Rockefeller, and others, they decided, they decided to give away half of their fortunes. Take, for example, Baron Hilton. He is a devout Catholic man 
whose great charity is a concern for the poor. In particular, he has a great admiration for the sisters who work among the poor, who minister to the sick, the suffering, and the poorest of the poor. And he has dedicated hundreds and thousands of dollars to aid these sisters in their ministry. That's one example. And then there's Tom Monahan, another faith-filled Catholic man. He's the owner of the Detroit Tigers. He's the owner and founder of Domino's Pizza. And he has committed his fortune to helping the poor as well. He has committed to many different Catholic causes throughout the world. But one of the greatest causes he has is for Catholic education, to care for Catholic education, to make it available to the poor and the needy. And that's who he is. And so this giving pledge that that was called by Fortune magazine is not just for the wealthy men and women who were able to do that, but it's for all of us. Now, some of us might say, well, it's easy for them to do that. They're billionaires. They can give away five and half of it, and they still have half left. But when you think about it, they didn't have to do it. They chose to be Christ-like, to be a servant to the poor, to help, and to do all that they could with what they had been blessed with. And we, too, have to follow the way of Christ to be servants to one another. And so Christ's words in the gospel today are so prophetic for all of us. Because he said, store up an exhaustible treasure in heaven. Where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Be prepared, he says, for the final judgment. This week's scriptures and the past week's gospels have been talking about so many things that apply to a gift of servanthood, a gift of sharing. If we think about last week's gospel, it was about the splitting of an inheritance. Who should get what? On one's life, what is most important, we have to say. Because what does our possessions account for? Jesus said to the crowd. And so we have to look at what matters the most to our God and to each of us. Because I believe the words of Christ in the scriptures today force us to ask ourselves, where exactly does my treasure lie? What matters the most to me? And I guess we could look at it in another way. If my life was about to end, what would matter the most to me as I was dying? It's a sobering question when we think about that, but I think it's a good question to act and reflect upon sometimes to see where our priorities are and are we true servants and ministers of Jesus Christ? Because the scriptures that we have heard these past Sundays tell us the story of Christ's journey a journey to Jerusalem that will call him to suffer and to die for all of us. And it's during Christ's journey that we have experienced over these weeks some truly dramatic parables. Because we have heard the story of the Good Samaritan. We have heard and encountered Mary and Martha at the death of their brother Lazarus. We've heard the teaching of the Our Father We've heard about the sending of the 72 into the world to go and minister to all God's people. And all of those stories, those parables, when they take together, that's Christ's parting message to the world, to you and me, on what we must do if we are to follow him. I'm sure everybody probably remembers the best-selling book, Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Albom. In the, in the book, he writes about a young writer who reconnects with his teacher who is dying of Lou Gehrig's disease. And after a series of Tuesday gatherings with the teacher, the young writer learns valuable lessons from the teacher about life. 
what really matters as the person is dying. And so too, I think, St. Luke's Gospel today gives to us in the past weekends what should be important to all of us. I guess in a sense we could refer to all of the past scriptures and today as Sundays with Jesus, his lessons to you and me as true followers of Christ. And there are lessons about Christ as he walks to his death. Because what do they tell us? They teach us about prayer. They teach us about our neighbors. They teach us about how we need to care more about one another and not the goods of the world. They teach us on what's most important, what we do here at that altar, body broken, blood poured out, the gift of Jesus' love for you and me. Because those are the lessons, those are the treasures that we need to build up and store in our heart for when life comes to an end. And so Jesus said, be prepared, he tells us. And at the conclusion of the gospel, he says, much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. He's speaking to you and me. No one's excluded. He invites you and I to hear, to act, and to do. He has entrusted a great treasure to us, the gift of Jesus Christ, a gift the Father has sent to us. And it's now here, today, that we need to continue to share that treasure, to build up the blessings of God in our lives so that we indeed may bring those messages to the world. That's Christ's giving pledge to you and us, to you and me. That's what he says to us time after time. That's our inheritance, the cross, the gift of body broken, blood poured out, the pain, the suffering, and the agony, his dying for each of us. That's our inheritance. That's our strength and our grace and above all the love he gives to each of us. And so as we're nurtured, as we're cared for and loved, we need to see where our blessings and values lie. You can't measure that in dollars and cents, but you can measure it in the grace, the blessings God gives to us because he's with us always. So we receive those gifts today. We come to worship and prayer. We sing, we pray, we celebrate, and we have to pass it on to the next generation and the generation after us, because it's the grace of the Gospels, of these moments shared with Christ, these Sundays with Jesus, that strengthen us and bless us and enrich us every day. All we have to do is remember Christ's words. Where your treasure is, there also will be your heart. Where is my treasure, we have to ask. Where is my heart? It's in finding the answer, celebrating the love of Christ, and making a pledge of our lives to our God that we will be blessed, nurtured, and loved by God each day.